ear. What's good, man? Today we got a brand new video for y'all. Today we're going to be talking about the Chris Tyson or Ava situation. If you guys didn't know Ava or Chris Tyson, one of the pillars of the Transformer movement in the community, has been caught talking to little kids, which has been a pretty common theme going around for this community specifically. And people in sort of the social media space, honestly. It's been a lot of people coming out recently. Dr. Disrespect, her, one of the actors for Cartoon Network. Basically, anyone that's in a prominent position involving children, social media. It's been coming out that they've been talking to kids. And she's the latest perpetrator. So, recently it was exposed that she's been having conversations with a bunch of minors on Snapchat, Twitter, uh, promising, to, promising to get them into videos with Mr. Beast having ongoing dialogue with little kids, talking about, I mean, I can show you right here, for example. Just having, basically, I don't know, everyday conversations, sending kissy emojis, calling them dad. Just basically just a bunch of freak shit that you shouldn't be doing with little kids. Especially if you're in a position like he is right now, with one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful YouTuber in the world, you shouldn't be abusing your position to talk to little kids. And I don't even know why you would even engage in such things. But when you like this, eh, it kind of... It kind of makes sense. So if you guys didn't know, Ava or Chris Tyson, she's one of Mr. Beast's best friends, one of the pillars. She, he used to be a he. He used to be Chris Tyson, but then she converted over and became Ava. You know, went through the whole, the whole little change. You know, had to get a whole new, got a whole new player build, uh, added some new attributes, got some new badges, changed the attributes up, went to the Gatorade facility. I'm saying did all that shit, right? She went from a whole, she went from a six foot two slasher to a six foot nine post spin specialist, and recently it's kind of been an ongoing battle on the internet. If if she's guilty, if she's not guilty, should we be treating her this way? Is it because she's trans that everyone is kind of getting on her? When the reality is, the evidence is here. We've seen what she did. Now I think people are coming more so to light and kind of explaining or kind of taking the side of the children, because it took a lot of pressure. For the first couple of days, YouTubers weren't really talking out about it. They were hesitant to speak about it. They were waiting to gain a lot of information, but we'll touch on that later on, right? So outside of the whole thing with the kids, she was known to support a CP artist by the name of Shadman. So Shadman here, he was a, he's a CP artist. If you guys don't know what CP is, I ain't going to spell it out for you, but you can figure it out. But he's been known to draw kids doing inappropriate things, younger cartoon people, and he even drew Keemstar's daughter giving neck to Donald Trump. So, and she, at the time, she was seven years old. So that's the kind of people that he associates with, right? And there was always allegations about curse that people were kind of unsure about it, or people were always very defensive about it, like citing that, okay, the reason that you guys are coming out with this kind of stuff is because he's trans, not because he's actually doing these things. And there wasn't really any concrete proof it was more so just allegations speculations so people didn't really take it serious this has been going on for a pretty long time now i know nick Merckx had called him out and a bunch of youtubers had made videos a year ago a couple years ago kind of exposing him for the very things that he's being accused of right now but everyone kind of always came to his defense i know even mr beast at the time he had put out a tweet saying this is absurd Chris isn't my nightmare, he's my friend, and these things are all fine. All this transphobia started to piss me off. So this is after, this is following the grooming allegations that were put upon him and Mr. Beast. Obviously, it was his friend, he came to his defense, right? But then, now, all of a sudden, after everything has come out, the tone has completely shifted, and Mr. Beast put out a statement finally after a bunch of pressure online. This has been, this probably came out three, four days ago when the original video dropped, exposing everything. And he just tweeted this out now saying, over the last few days, I've become aware of the serious allegations of Ava Tyson's behavior online, and I'm disgusted and opposed to such unacceptable acts. During that time, I have been focused on hiring an independent third party to conduct a thorough investigation to ensure I have all the facts. That said, I've seen enough online and taken immediate action to remove Ada from the company, my channel, and any association with Mr. Beast. I do not condone or support any of the inappropriate actions. I will allow the independent investigators the necessary time to conduct a comprehensive investigation and will take any further actions. I can't tell with that. I don't know. Something they're findings. But then... Ava herself put out a tweet that was completely different to what Mr. Beast put out. She has said, I would like to apologize for any of, any of my past behaviors or comments if it hurt or offended anyone. 
It was not my intent. Seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media focus on my family and mental health. Focus on your family and mental health? Bitch, what about, the, what about the families that you cooked? What about the mental health of the kids you've been talking to? Focus on your mental health, your family. She's making it seem like she's stepping back to take care of herself when in reality she got fired. So they're clearly not even on the same page, right? So it doesn't really seem like a sincere apology. It was not my intent. That's such an interesting word because intent, people always like to use that word, intent, intent. It was not my intent. Well, what did you intend when you were talking to all these little kids? What did you intend when you were saying these kissy emojis, promising them to be in videos, promising to take them out certain places? What, what, was, the, what was the intent there? What, could, what, what possible intent could it be other than you were trying to elicit certain things from them? You know, like you had money, you had fame. With those two things, you could get pretty much any girl or boy if you wanted to. I don't know what kind of freaky stuff he into, but I'm saying he switched, so you know he, he swing both ways clearly. So, if you had all that, you had access to those means, but you still went out your way to talk to little kids. What was the intent there? What other intent could there be except you wanted to do stuff with them? And if you guys didn't know, Mr. Beast, you know he had he has a pretty good click. I know the main three stars from his thing were in the beginning were Chandler, Chris. And Mr. Beast himself, of course. And as you can see, Curse over, overcame some changes. He switched up and became Ava. While Chandler <laughs> has become heavy Jesus, heavy Christian, read Bible verses on to like every day and kind of distance himself from the brand for a while. I know he's recently made a return, but for a while he's kind of gone from it. And he consistently just reads Bible verses every single day. And the only thing that turns you to God normally is like if you go some traumatic nonsense or if you always just believe from the beginning. But normally something that turns you into this. Because this wasn't always his former content. Like you see, like it was comedic. Uh, he did a bunch of different things. And then out of nowhere, it was a shift to just straight just God and Bible verses and Jesus and all this stuff. So it leads me to believe that he was aware of certain things going on and didn't feel comfortable being a part of the brand anymore and decided to go with this. I've seen a lot of former employees from Mr. Beast tweeting out that he knew and he was very aware of the allegations and he was always aware of what she was doing. But to me, I'm not going to put that on that man's name. And the people that are tweeting it out, you're just as bad, right? Because you only tweeted out that he knew once you left the company. You didn't tweet it out while you were there. So you saying that after you already had left the company doesn't make it any better for you. You were only, you were comfortable hiding the truth until his fame, fortune, and the money he was giving to you for being a part of his company no longer was able to be given to you. So you only left once his platform no longer suited you. So now you're just burning the ship down because you weren't allowed to be a part of it. So you aren't any better than him, even if he did know. Now, what I want to talk about is really just the mixed reactions from everyone that's been coming out, right? Like, normally when allegations like this come out, whether it's EDP Dr. Disrespect, everyone's kind of quick to judge, right? We don't really wait for the evidence because of kind of the platform or position they take. I know EDP is very conservative. Dr. Disrespect, I don't know his status on politics, but he's kind of like a macho man. Like, he's not with none of the gimmicks, not with none of the sensitive stuff. So, with people like that, I tend to see that we're quick to judge them, quick to place blame upon them. And there's really no need for any evidence, right? We're just quick to just condemn them, as we should, right? Because at the end of the day, they did some nut shit. So, we should condemn them, right? But with Ava, it was always like, let's wait for the evidence. Let's see what's going on first. I'm not going to make a comment. Like, if you guys even look at some of the tweets, if you guys look at the tweets and the news articles from certain uh, high-profile streamers or high-profile news outlets, you can tell the difference in the way they report certain things, right? So this is from Rolling Stones. Ava Chris steps away from all things Mr. Beast amid transphobic attacks. Transphobic. No, one's, no one cares that she's trans. Like, I hate when people try to make it so that her being trans or her identity a certain community plays a part into how people are coming at her. No, no matter who it is, anything involving children or wrongdoing to children is condemned in the same way, right? It's you guys that are twisting it around and making it so that anyone that's trans, or anyone, that's a, a, anyone that's aligned to a certain community that you guys associate with, that their punishment is less though than someone else. Because Dr. Disrespect, same thing, talking to minors. Look, 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 at, the, look at the headings. Same, same news article. Dr. Disrespect knowingly sent explicit messages to a minor, former Twitch employee says. Banned from the plat. Like, just a, not even a month apart. Like, almost a month apart. I think I can't even tell what the date is on that, John. 
But you see the way they're reporting certain things and the way news outlets are talking about it. Now, boom, let's go on to what you're gonna call it. Some content creators. Pokimane, well, she's seen a doctor, doctor suspected. This is all she tweeted. Yuck. Immediately. Nothing else. No long statement. No need to see nothing. Immediately just tweeted out. Yuck. But then, regarding Ava, she said, I don't know all the details regarding the Ava situation, but I want to make it clear any appropriate behavior towards minors is unacceptable, regardless of who you are. So you see, she came with a long, lengthy statement saying she didn't know all the facts yet, but before... She seemed very knowledgeable when she, was tweeting, when she tweeted this out. She didn't need no long, lengthy explanation for this. She just immediately tweeted out, yuck. Why? Because her views don't align with Dr. Disrespect's views. So that begs the question, why are people so easily able to punish and condemn those from one certain community, but reluctant to do so towards another community? And I've been thinking about it, and it's really just only two reasons, really. I like to think of things from both perspectives, so not to have a biased point of view. But I'll present both sides for you, and you tell me what you guys think. So on one side, it's usually due to how marginalized people are judged, right? Usually those from a marginalized community are usually judged by the worst, while those from like a higher, more privileged community are judged by the best, right? So for example, a black person could be president, you could see a million doctors, but as soon as you see a few people stealing from a store, you could say... Oh, all black people steal. They all loot. They had no jobs. They're bums. Women. You deal with great women on a regular basis, whether it's your all the great moms in the world, the nurses, uh, the teachers that you've had in your past who shaped you to be who you are. You see three girls shaking ass in a club. Now all women are whores. All women don't deserve anything. So that's one side of it, right? So Ava is a prominent figure in the trans community, so they don't want to have all the hard work they've done to uplift that community be stripped away and have people use it as an opportunity to attack trans people instead of really just attack the one individual person, right? So that's, 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 that's one pers perspective or side about it. The other side is, the second side of it is, it shines a goal on the elitists in the world today or those from this community who just wish to take advantage of children, right? You see it with the promotion of sexuality at a young age, the promotion of changing their gender, having these gender surgeries, uh, talking about gay history in schools and what it means to be gay and sexual. I know for me growing up personally, when we had sex ed, it was in eighth grade. And for us to even be allowed to enter the class, mind you, we're 13 and 14 this age, for us to even, to, for us to even be allowed to enter the class, we had to sign permission slip for it, right? Prior to that, we had no knowledge of what sexuality was, how kids were made, None of that stuff. We weren't taught that. We weren't talking about that. What we learned was our ABCs, one, two, threes, and who who George who, who Washington was, right? So you see that promotion or that advocacy for having that in schools at a younger age. So that's the second side of it. They're afraid that it's going to shine light on what their real goal is, which is take advantage of children, basically. And it's 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 it's, it's a little bit of both, honestly. I had to say, because. When you see things like, even, I just seen something today, honestly, about uh, Kai Sinat. Let me see, I'll show you. He said, he's weird, bro. It's effed up. It's weird. How do you know the age of someone knowing you're a grown-ass man and still move forward? I don't understand that, right? And this guy, instead of attacking Chris for what he did with the children, he's going to attack Kai. The misgendering on purpose is so gross. She's a pedo. Attack that she's a pedo. Not her identity, please. Like, bro, what are you... What, what, is the, what is the the concern here? What are we really talking about? Are we worried that she's trans or are you worried about what she's doing with kids? No one cares if she's trans. Shit weird, but no one cares. Like, no one's worried about this, bro. We worry about what she's doing with little kids and how you guys allowed her for years to go unchecked while people were calling her out, saying that she was doing this stuff, and you guys continue to defend her the entire time. No one said nothing about it. You guys didn't want to speak up about it. You guys were reluctant to speak up about it. It took... YouTubers and everyone online attacking these content creators who were so quick to speak out about other things and distance themselves from other situations that were similar to this for you guys to even put out a lengthy statement. Because before, you were quick to talk. You were quick to hate, quick to put out little uh, things like this, and it didn't really matter to you. You didn't need to do research. You didn't need to have all the facts. But now, when it's someone from your community, you're reluctant to condemn them because why their views align with yours so in a sense you think that's going to harm your community because you see the other people too like james charles how many times has james charles been accused of talking to little kids a bunch a bunch it's been proven people have had stories about it 
it's been sent out. No one cares. He still has his platform. He still has all his brand deals. It doesn't matter to anyone. One of the girls, I forget what her name is, it was a TikTok creator, and she had sexually assaulted a, a guy. No one cared about it. She still has her platform. Doesn't matter. So I noticed that you guys, or I can't say you guys, but this specific community, you guys only care when people who are against you and against your ideologies and beliefs do some nut shit. So instead of us focusing on the nut shit itself, we're focused on what views people have or where community they come from, and we use that as an opportunity to tear them down instead of focusing on the actual act itself. Like, we're not worried that James Charles is talking about, or is talking to underage people. We're worried that he's gay and it's going to be, oh, it's going to be uh, looked at as homophobic if we call him out for what he did. We're not worried that this girl is sexually assaulting men. We're worried that, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be used as an opportunity to be sexist against women and to bring them down. Like, we're worried about the wrong things in a sense. But I'm going to keep up with this situation the next couple of days, see what happens, see if anything does come about it. My guess is, honestly, she'll take a couple of years off and return, and it'll, it'll all be good. Nothing's going to happen. But, yeah, man, let me know what you guys think. Let me, guys, let me know which, what side you stand on. Do you think people are – you think people are looking to talk about it because of – what community they come from, or are they trying to hide what they're doing to little kids? Oh no, man, it's crazy. And more and more, you just you see what see what's going on in our world. But yeah, man, it's been your boy Dean. I'm out.